Hello and welcome to The Exchange, the program where we introduce you to lots of interesting people and exchange ideas on topics that affect all of us in our everyday lives. I'm Rob Buckingham and my co-host on The Exchange is my wife Christy. Hi, it's great to be here today. On today's show we'll be discussing the topic of our changing job market. How do we keep abreast of the changes and remain marketable? What are the emerging industries that have a growth path and which ones don't? To discuss this topic, we're joined by Claire Madden, who is a social researcher for McCrindle Research. Claire understands the changing culture surrounding education and financial and global trends and how they are redefining careers. Welcome, Claire. Thanks. It's great to be here. It's good to have you. We're also joined by Melita Long, who has 16 years experience in career coaching, marketing and recruitment and is currently a consultant at Katie Roberts Career Consulting. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to have you. Before we get on with our conversation today, we're going to take a look at this. What are the main contributors to the changing job market? Technology advancements, demographic changes, global opportunities, jobs that exist today weren't even a blip on the radar a decade ago. So which career paths have a future and which ones don't? How are these factors shaping the emerging job market? Really looking forward to unpacking this uh, uh, topic today, intensely practical. Absolutely. Yeah. How do you ladies think that the job market is actually changing? Well, we have significant demographic, technological and structural changes all intersecting in our society at the moment. So that's creating um, opportunities as well as some changes and challenges. Yes. So if you think about, um, we've got a, both a, a growing population and an ageing population. Yes. Yeah. So with our ageing population, it means that for every um, retiree that we've got in our society at the moment, we've got five people in the workforce, but in 2050 we'll have just 2.7 people in the workforce for every retiree, which means there'll be greater demands for productivity on, on the labour force. We've also got a lot of technological changes happening, um, which means that um, some jobs are becoming automated, um, computers mm. are taking over in, in some, some uh, areas, but also there are um, opportunities that the technology is creating for new jobs as well. Sure. Yeah, Melita, your comments on the changing job market? I agree with everything that Claire has said, as well as that um, some other factors are um, with the fact that the population is, is ageing and those mm. demands put, being put yes. on the economy, we're going to be working for longer. Mm. I fully expect that people will be working until they're 70. Mm. Um, I know that may sound like a long time, but you know, the retirement age is changing to 65 next year, mm. so it's not a big stretch. It's not a big stretch, no. You know, so, so, so you mentioned about jobs that would become, um, you know, that would change and maybe even become robotic. But there's definitely things that, that, that people still need to do. What are some of the emerging job trends that, that won't uh, go, I guess? It's a great question. And if we look at the growth areas in our society, so with our, our ageing population, people are living longer, they're working longer and they're retiring um, and those services, so services around retirement, um, aged care, they're going to continue to grow. At the same time, we've got a baby boom occurring. So we're having record numbers of births, through over 300,000 each year now. So anything in childcare, um, education are going to continue to aged be in care. demand. Aged care and childcare, um, both of those areas, as well as the opportunities technology is creating. So five years ago, jobs like uh, app developers and social media managers wouldn't have even been around and now, now they're increasing mm. markets. Do you, th do you think we're going to see some jobs just cease to exist and what would they be? Oh, absolutely. Um, any jobs that could be automated, basically, mm. something that could be taken over by a robot or a computer. Um, but all of the people-centric careers are going to continue. Mm. Um, Do you think they're going to grow as well as continue? Because people are be needing human touch. A absolutely. And I think as we go into more and more of a, a cyber age and, and more online communication, online shopping and all the rest of it, that the face-to-face -face contact is going to become more and more important for people. Mm. Um, so I think any careers that are focused around people, helping people, you know, obviously healthcare, education, consulting, um, 
counselling, all of those sorts of services are going to continue to be in need, emergency and protective services. Yeah. Um, those ones aren't going to change. Now when you mention people working till they're 70, I mean they're obviously you're not expecting, are you, or maybe you are, that people work flat out until they're 70. Are you expecting some sort of transition and how do we actually help people transition? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, already the trends are that people are working part time more. You know, more commonly, people mm. are working part time. From what age, roughly? Well, it depends. At, at any age, people mm. can be working part time while they're studying full time. They can be working part time while they have children. Mm. They can be working part time while they're perhaps looking after um, elderly parents mm. or have other considerations. Um, sometimes, people are working part time in more than one job. They could have a portfolio career. Um, which is an, a growing concept, particularly with people who are working in the creative fields, um, mm. who have creative passions, you know, artists, performers, um, photographers, dance teachers, all sorts of people like those, um, where they, they have a day job to pay the bills, but then they actually have something that they want to do on the side to fulfil their creative passion. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What about trades? We're going to see um, those still as useful um, employment in the future? Absolutely, because with our growing population, there are more housing demands than ever before. So whether it be for um, industrial, commercial or residential, there's a need for uh, properties to continue to be built. And so, so trades are an area that will continue to be in demand. Um, and as, as trades people can look at ways to be innovative and entrepreneurial and add customer service and, and new ways and embrace new technologies in their careers as well, um, that will definitely be an area where there's still demands. Yeah. Where, where's the market on people? There's a real trend towards people working for themselves and then some people just find that all too hard, would rather mm. get a pay packet. Where's that sitting at the moment? Look, I, I think for some people, entrepreneurial activities will always be appealing. Some people are just born entrepreneurs. Mm. Um, it really comes down to an individual's risk profile. Having been self-employed myself, I know that it's not necessarily the easiest option mm. because you have to be the technical expert in whatever your field of expertise is, but then you also have to have sales, marketing, financial management skills, people management, customer service, all of those skills are vital. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's what, what we're seeing too. And many people are, um, are going to be self-employed at some point in their life. We, in Australia, we've got over 2.1 million active small businesses or active businesses. So that equates to almost one for every 10 people. So a lot of people are choosing to be self-employed at some point in their life, but mm. it does add complexities. And if you're someone who's wanting to work in a team and part of an organisation, um, you've got to take that into account as well. So it's, it's maybe for a season, but it's not necessarily for everyone. Mm. I'd right. like to get to, back to the technology uh, issue for a moment as well, and how sometimes technology can actually end up isolating mm. people. And I think you mentioned before, Claire, about the, the desire that we have also for interacting with people people yeah, uh, and you know from what you just said a moment ago for people that are working on their own but they also want to be a part of a team mm. do you think we might see some sort of knee-jerk reaction at some point in the future where people are saying I don't I don't want to be isolated I want to be part of something where I interact with people I think it's a basic human need the need to belong the need to have relationships and and have a place where they can connect so there will be uh, probably a swing back to community, a swing back to belonging, particularly with our social networks. We've got more connections, but we are more yes. isolated and less mm -hmm. known. So um, definitely the need for community and the need to be around people is, is not going to die away. Very yeah. interesting point, yeah. the need for autonomy versus the need to be known. And um, it's that, that, that same sort of thought of people want the flexibility of working alone, but they also mm -hmm. want structure. That's right, yep. And that comes down to the services that people are providing as well. It, although a lot of people are choosing to, to buy online and, and conduct business online, th there's no substitute for the face-to-face -face contact and mm. more and more people are actually seeking that out, yeah. um, particularly in terms of service providers where mm. th they want that human interaction, they want that response. Um, you know, and a lot of people are choosing to to not have to work with a deal with a call centre that's based overseas when oh, they can deal absolutely. with someone based here in Australia. Um, we could keep the rest of the program going with frustrating stories of, of ringing mm. overseas call centres, <laughs> I'm sure. What are the dead ends to avoid? Especially if we're um, talking to younger people who may be choosing a career path, where should we steer them away from? 
I think you want to look at the trends in technology and what jobs are leading to being more automated. So, for example, um, you used to drive down the motorway and, and stop at the toll booth. Now you just drive through with your e-tag. Even checking on um, the plane, you, you check on uh, via mm -hmm. your mobile phone, whereas you, the airline staff used to help um, with that. Going to the local supermarket, you can self-scan your groceries. So, mm -hmm. looking at the trends of what is becoming automated overseas, it's likely that that will become automated here. But um, as, as well as that, the jobs are um, that are more. It's becoming a more direct world. So people are um, looking for um, insurance directly with the with the insurance company. They're looking directly for. Um, they're, they're selling their cars directly. They're they're going um, online directly to look for a job. So some of those jobs that used to be in the middle. Um, Yes. Middleman yep. uh, are becoming uh, less while mm -hmm. people are going more, more direct with a, a few yeah, Google searches. Absolutely. Okay, we'll come, we'll pick that up in just a moment. Okay, so I'm thinking no to toll booth operator, <laughs> checkout chick, right. and insurance salesman. <laughs> we need to take a break. We'll be right back with more discussion on the exchange in just a moment. Welcome back to The Exchange. We're having a great discussion with Claire Madden and Melita Long about the changing job market and how one can stay marketable. Before the break, Melita, uh, you were going to make some comments in regard to preparing children for their employment future. Okay, so I think the key thing is that careers are no longer linear or, or predictable. Mm. Okay, so the only thing that's actually constant or, or reliable is change. That's right. So one thing that people need to be aware of is that the children that are coming through school today are likely to have somewhere between three and seven different careers in their lifetime. Mm. Now that may sound like a lot, but if you factor in you know, the career you have while you're at uni, um, the career you do straight after, before you have your quarter life crisis and then realise, oh that's <laughs> not right for me, um, and then change, mm. people will probably be in careers for an average of 10 years And is that so. because it's an expectation or, you know, they say it takes seven years to get mastery of something. Yes. So if you leave something after three, you haven't really got mastery of it. And then what happens with the people who've been in a career, say a brain surgeon for 30 years and, and you know, if we don't have that, then we don't have all those years of experience in the in industry. Look, it won't be the same for every profession and, right. and certainly professions such as doctors where there's a vested mm. interest and they spend 12 years of studying just, just to get to consultant level, um, they're not going to give that up easily, not after all that hard work. But mm. I guess it's just across the board that people will be changing more frequently and That's certainly right. I'm seeing with Gen Ys that they're not prepared to put up with a career that they're not happy in. They're not mm. prepared to do what the baby boomer generation was happy to do, which is to stay in a job forever just for and security. And retire and get a gold watch and... Indeed. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That, that, yeah. As well as the three to seven careers that you're talking about, people are changing jobs within those careers more That's often right. as well. So the average voluntary turnover now is about 15% per annum. When you say voluntary turnover, people are saying people, we want to move on. That's right, choosing yep. to move on, which equates to about three years and four months in a job, the median tenure. So it can, um, for an average school leaver today, if you look at the retirement trends, like you're saying, they'll be mm -hmm. working later in life, it can look like up to 17 jobs in a lifetime with a lot more mobility and churn and change. Wow, that's, that's amazing, isn't it? And, and are em employers looking for this as well, or what do employers want well, in this changing job market? Well, I, I guess it depends because a lot of employers would like people to be around for a long term, but everything's on a contractual basis now. There's unfortunately there's no longer loyalty from employers, and employees have have ceased being loyal to one particular employer for a length of time either. It depends on what meets the needs of both parties. So it's very much sort of by arrangement, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, uh, and they're definitely looking for people who can bring productivity and innovation mm. and people skills into the workforce as well. There's greater demands to produce more with fewer staff, with fewer resources. So the need for productivity in your employees as well as um, innovation because we're all organisations mm. needing to innovate to keep up with the changing times. So yeah. basically an employer wants somebody who wants to be there. That's right. Someone yeah. who wants to be there. And at the end of the day, all of us, no matter what job we have, we're, sol we're hired to solve problems for our, our employer using our specialist skills. From the yeah. CEO right down to the cleaner, mm. at every level, that's what we need to demonstrate as our ability mm. to solve problems. Yeah, it's fascinating. Okay. Well, you've heard from our experts. Let's see what the people have to say. How do you think technology is changing the face of the job market? Ooh, um, I think it's changing pretty quickly, um, especially with things like, you know, um, well, iPhones and all that sort of stuff. So it makes it pretty easy to 
to access those sorts of things. So yeah, yeah, that's probably the main way I think of. Yeah. I think the job market's changing completely in regards to like, you know, there's not so much um, jobs around the city. There's a lot of mining, a lot of exploration, drilling, so on. There's a lot more of that going on at the moment, full stop. I, I think it's definitely becoming less centralised. Um, I mean, for us, we can do a lot more at home than we used to be able to do. Well, I believe so, because um, many people are buying things online, so it's affecting retail a great deal. I think it's changing the availability of how people can find jobs, if that makes sense. Are you seeing jobs disappear and some emerging as a result of it? Uh, to an extent, yes. Uh, probably more so in the industrial sort of sector, more than the... Uh, retail sector, yeah. I think some of the trades might be sort of slowing down a little bit in, in a way. Um, and sorts of things that are emerging, I think that those IT type jobs, there's always seems to be new things popping up that you hadn't even thought of. You know, like seven years ago, we wouldn't have even thought about Facebook, would we? So, stuff like that. Well, I think fabrication in general, I mean, you know, we, we do very good fabrication here in Australia and now it's all going overseas. It's a lot cheaper uh, labour and so on. Well, I think retail's affected greatly. Any others? Um, well, I'm a bit concerned about offshore, how many jobs for IT and so forth are going offshore because I've got a young son that's doing IT for a career, it's his chosen area, so that's a concern for me. Do you see any jobs actually disappearing? Um, no, no, not that I know, we know of because a lot of us Kiwis come here to work, so no, not that, no. We can make new jobs, like I work at Coles and... Yeah, it, um, with the self-serve, technology developed that and people say it's losing jobs but it actually creates jobs for, you know, maintenance, that sort of job and there's always someone still working in it. And if you were to start out again, what career would you choose? My career choosing, I would go into nursing. I actually work for the banks and have been for 26 years, still to do the stay, um, yeah, I definitely would take up nursing. I'd, I'd probably go into the trades personally. I predominantly drive machinery, so uh, for me, I'm not really sure. I was just lucky enough to get in that field and, uh, yeah, I just continue on with that from school. But I, ideally, I would have liked to be an electrician. Obviously, aged care is going to be a huge concern for the future and um, possibly counselling or some role like that. I sort of... Um, my chosen area has been graphics and that was more uh, compute, ended up being more computer oriented for me, but probably more something that was um, concerning one to one with people. Joining us now is Street Talk reporter Sandra Cavallo. Hello. Welcome Sandra. Hi. It's good to have you Sandra. Great topics out there. Anything that surprised you? Uh, yeah, what surprised me was the IT thing. I think because I always think that IT um, is a secure job industry. And what came through was, it was particularly one lady that, you know, jobs are going overseas mm. in IT. Um, whereas I would have thought, you know, IT, it's here to stay because we're so, we're so involved in it. It's so much mm. a part of our everyday life. So, yeah, that, that kind of surprised me. I hadn't actually thought about that. Um, and, and is that reflected in the trends, Claire? Yeah, that's right. Like we were saying before, whatever can be automated and computerised is being done and whatever can be um, moved offshore, there's impacts of globalisation there, flatter structures both in our organisations but also globally, so there's far more um, yeah, connection. But I love how the one young girl said that, OK, you've got now um, where well, you can scan your, your groceries, self-serve, and yes, it looks like it's taking away jobs, but it's actually creating jobs because we actually have to maintain those automated that's machines. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe we are a little bit close-minded in thinking that it's just closing down jobs, but it's creating new ones. Absolutely, it's changing the types of jobs that there are. Mm. The, the problem, the, the challenge for people is that a lot of the lower-level, low-skilled jobs, particularly in manufacturing or, or, or retail, uh, some of those are disappearing. Mm. A lot, a lot of those are disappearing, and the but. What's emerging are jobs that are more um, technically savvy, using more um, higher level relationship management skills, those sorts of roles. Um, mm -hmm. And there's even emerging areas in what they call green collar workers now. So there's di diminishing oh blue collar workers, but there's green collar workers, which is all in the, the environmental sector and right. um, corporate sustainable um, sustainability, um, corporate social responsibility. Uh, you know, responses to climate change and, and, and global warming and everything like that. So there are emerging areas, but there may not be a direct correlation between the people who are losing their particular jobs or particular careers and the new emerging ones. Mm. People will have to retrain, mm. and that's going to be a key emphasis moving forward, is that people need to continue to retrain. Mm. Gone are the days where you can do a trade, 
or go to university and get a qualification and rest on your laurels for the and rest of your career. And means starting from scratch, literally? No, it doesn't. No, it's a changing world. Um, um, universities and TAFEs have had to get real in terms mm. of what people need because people are retraining more often. You don't have to go back and do a three-year or four-year degree yeah, full-time. Right. Um, mm. With postgraduate qualifications, you've got the opportunity to do a postgraduate certificate or a postgraduate diploma or a master's working off the basis of your existing qualification, your existing bachelor degree. Mm -hmm. um, and then the government's also funding through Commonwealth and Victoria about people doing TAFE level qualifications up to diploma level as well. Yeah. And you can study online and there's so many varieties. Sandra, thank you for popping in. Thank you. We'll be back with more of The Exchange in just a moment. Welcome back to The Exchange. We're talking with social researcher Claire Madden and career consultant Melita Long about the changing job market. What if someone is just made redundant? What Say do they do? Say around 50, which is one of those interesting ages anyway. Mm. Yeah, look, it, it's, a, it's a challenge for a lot of people, especially if someone's been in one career, one organisation for a long period of time, that they often will experience the stages of grief. Um, so it's really important for them to get some support. Uh, in an ideal world, the employer should provide outplacement, but that's not legislated, so they don't have to. Uh, but I, I encourage people to seek out either a career consultant or even just a counsellor. Talk to someone who can help them through the stages of grief, first of all, if that's what they need, and then get through the other side of that, that, that dip and then get into finding a new job and, and also take it as an opportunity to look at whether they can reinvent themselves. Maybe yeah. they need to, they certainly need to change something. So yeah. they probably need a new resume, a new cover letter, mm. new LinkedIn profile, um, you know, job hunting strategies, how they can actually and find something And given the predictability new. of having to find a new job, do you think people should actually prepare financially for that sort of transition so that if it does take time to get the resume and the... It's, it's part of people managing their own careers. These days, you know, you, you can't rely on your organisation to manage your career for mm. you. You have to take personal responsibility for your career, for your financial mm. position, um, and you have to take responsibility for, for marketing yourself mm. in your career yeah. as well. Mm. So people mm. should have their resumes ready. They should update them at least once a year. And you mentioned, Claire, LinkedIn being a very powerful tool. Why is that? Yeah, it's a place for people to connect uh, with their careers and um, using social media that actually is, helps uh, professional connections is a, is a great way. It's also a place where people are finding jobs now because um, they can target directly for people who have experience in, a, in an industry or area. So um, it's, a, it's a great great way to increase your connections. Is, is there an age where it becomes difficult to transition into another job? Well, we look at um, it being more about often an attitude than an actual age, more about a mindset than a life stage because um, say technology use for example, everyone, all the generations are using technology but it's our attitude or our approach to how we use it that's different Yes. and it's the same kind of thing that can be applied when you're looking for a, a new job or needing to change careers or upskilling or retraining. It's often keeping um, up with the, the times, being adaptive and responsive and having an attitude where you can um, move with the times and make changes rather than um, feeling feeling stuck. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to add to what Claire mm. said, and it's really about being flexible and adaptable and open to change because it, it is inevitable. And and also you yeah, have to have that mindset of, of giving something a go. Um, and there are opportunities at all ages. You know, when I had my own business, I hired people from their 20s through to their 60s. And my experience in career consulting, I found that people 40 plus were, were, were fabulous for what I was looking for. No hesitation hiring people in their 50s and 60s. And I've helped clients of that age transition into new careers as well. Just recently, I had a lady who's 50 who who's looking at retraining to be a teacher. She's got 20 years of working life left, yeah. plenty of time to teach children. Yeah. Fantastic. And a wonderful age, probably her family are all grown up and yeah, yeah it's fabulous. Melita and Claire, thank you so much for your it's time wonderful. and your advice and information today have been invaluable. Thanks, Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. Yeah. That's wonderful. Please go to our website for a fact sheet on this topic as well as more information about this show, The Exchange. We look forward to seeing you next time. See you then.